YouTube, what's up, man? This is a crazy gameplay weekend league action. As you guys follow M Keats, he's got the Broncos jerseys. Um, obviously, I have the Eagles jerseys. Fly, Eagles, fly. If you guys want to watch any of these games live, man, the link below is to my Twitch. That is where I stream these games live. Uh, and this was probably my best game of the weekend league. Um, I kicked the ball off first. I've been going in between three different defenses in weekend league. Obviously, still running dollar a lot. I still think it sheds the best of any other defense. But I'm also trying to mix in the big nickel. And I'm trying to mix in the 335 normal. Let me know what you guys think. Oh, excuse me. Let me know what you guys think. What defense you guys are running in weekend league now. And what do you think sheds the best? Because right now, I still think it's the dollar like how I run it. As you see, this is um against trips tight end. And what I like to do against first down, I want to use her to safety because he's probably going to run inside zone, and I want to be able to blow that up. He doesn't. I run for the corner route, and he has this tight end curl. Nice play. That's a play I think Jay Wall obviously ran that a lot to uh, win the uh, New England Club Series championship. Obviously, we were worried about the deep crossing route and trips tight end, but to be able to mix that corner route into the opposite side of the field is definitely really tough to use her both. As you said, I'm going to keep running the same defense. Second down. I, I'm probably still going to use her to uh, safety because I don't want to get ran on. Here we see it's a play action play, so it is that deep crossing route. He tries to go up top to Franco Harris. Deion Sanders is too fast to get burnt by a Franco Harris. Deion Sanders get over there. I wish I would have got the pick, but he knocks the ball away, man. That's why I put my fastest player in the deep middle safety, just so he can go left and right on the field uh, very easily, able to break up a lot of passes that way. So second down, now I'm going to go ahead and keep my little, keep my purple zones out here. Try to guard the corner route. Try to guard some crossing routes, whatever it may be. But I'm still on my safety because second down and 10, people will run to try to get half of this. Especially with a dollar look like this, people will run. And we get Lawrence Taylor to loop around perfectly. Bang. Sack. Obviously, that rarely happens, but it happened that time. We're going to loop Lawrence Taylor. My ends are Jadavion Clowney and uh, Khalil Mack. Also, the tackle I use... Um, I think I use Miles Garrett right now, yeah, because he has real good speed. Love speed at D tackle, man. It's my favorite part of the game. As you see there, I pause. What happens is when you're doing all these subs on my team like this, I'm doing all these subs, the sub players, and I feel like now I have to sub every single player on the field. And when the clock drips down to under 10, I can pause the game. And then when it comes back out of pause, I'll get another 15 seconds to do my adjustments. So we get to a third and 18. I switch defenses right now. I go into the big nickel. What I want to do is kind of cross man everybody. And he does a good job of hitting this, hitting this underneath route here to Franco Harris to get a lot of yards. What I noticed when I cross man, because obviously I didn't lurk that, because I noticed he had a deep post that got wide open from the man coverage. Because a lot of times you'll man everybody up in this trips tight end because it's hard to guard them crossing routes, hard to guard those corner routes, and there's a lot of holes in the zone. Right here, I'll do the same thing. Kind of man up everybody. He goes for a wheel route, and Pat Pete picks it off. Manned up on Tyreek Hill. Patrick Peterson picks it off. I didn't, I didn't realize that I didn't go out of bounds. But I get an interception on the first drive. That's huge. Anytime you're playing Madden four-minute quarters, man, you get an interception on the first drive. Plus, you get the ball at half. That's, that's pretty much like two built-in turnovers. So it's definitely a, a I mean, perfect scenario is getting an interception on your first drive. Like I said, since the club championship, I've been messing with the bunch a little bit. Mix it in the Skimbo ebook that's on Madden Turf right now. You guys can go check that out. The link is below. I'm mixing that with a little bit of what I saw with the route chems. And really just uh, using route chems and this New England playbook just to get a lot better on offense. Out of the bunch, as you hear, I hit Uncle Shea Sharp, man. He is the best tight end in the game. He just doesn't get hit sticked. He doesn't fumble. He rarely ever drops the ball. So he's going to make some big plays here for me. As you see, I come out here in the uh, the, the Pat Sale play. Obviously, probably the best play in Madden. You guys all know Pat Sale very well if you've been playing Madden at all this year. Mix it up. Got this post route over the middle. Hit Julio Jones. That's what route Kevin's can do. Give you a short post and bunch. And that's really an effective way to uh, attack the middle of the field, especially with big body receivers right now i had tyree kill on the bench i'm really not using him unless i feel an option to go ahead and bomb people because i got Keyshawn johnson i got randy moss i got and julio jones right there i try to mix in a quick snap one thing i um 
realize from playing so much Madden and playing defense is I hate people that mix up their tempo, man. Obviously, you see people like Ghost and, and, and Kiv and then want to flip the bunch and they want to take their time into the line. Especially with all these route comes, you have to take your time into the line. But as a defensive player, it makes them very comfortable when they know how long you're going to take at the line. So every once in a while, even if you're doing all these hot routes and everything, every once in a while you have to mix in a quick snap just to keep them on their toes. Hit the little delay route underneath to Ricky Williams. I realize I start Ricky Williams for some reason, and I, I got to go ahead and sub my team of the year, Todd Gurley, in there. Boom. But like I said, try to mix up your uh, play calls and your tempo at the line of scrimmage. That's a big deal. That's what I try to do with that quick snap. Here we go. We got a third and eight. Now, this is a situation where, obviously, I want to hit one of these corner routes or I want to hit that post route. But I also want to, you know, I could get half of this back. So, I'm going to dump it off to my running back, swatted, and tip picked. What? Lawrence Taylor just, I mean, it bounced off somebody's face. And Lawrence Taylor dove and picked it. So, now we're back in the hole. Now, that interception that I got really meant nothing because he gets the ball right back in great field position. So we're going to man up everybody again. This is pretty much what I'm, I'm going to try this next couple drives. User in Super Bowl camp, Chancellor, 94 speed. As you see, that in route just killed Ed Reed. So that's getting tough seeing that deep in route really killed me. I know he has this post route. It's going to kill me. So this one play that he runs out in New England that not a lot of people run is really giving me a lot of trouble with the man up everybody. So we'll see if it continues to work. We're a little close right now for that post route to work down the field. Runs a little inside his own Cam Chancellor fights. And Jalen Ramsey comes and cleans it up. Uh, my defense is, is pretty pretty secondary stacked, man. I mean, Chancellor, Adams, Sean Taylor, Derwin James, Ed Reed, Deion Sanders, Pat Pete, and of course Jalen Ramsey, who I think is the best corner in the game. Here we're gonna man up everybody. He runs that same play. Underneath, Cam Chancellor got to jump that. You see, one thing he did with Gurley that was cool is that he, he used the route cam on Gurley so he can get him doing flat routes one way or the other. And he would always let him do a flat route through the line of scrimmage, like to the, to the trip side, to the right. So that was definitely something that was neat and really, uh, really effective that made it hard to guard a real short area in the field. But right there, Cam Chancellor guarded it. Wish he would have did a little bit more. Here we go, manned up on third down, really get a box, and really get Khalil Mack to scream at him. Get that shed, I'm telling you guys, man. Dollar still sheds the best when you run this crossfire. I still think it's the best three-man rush in the game. But other people think 3-3-5 normal, and obviously that over G is really good too. So I hold him to the field goal. I got a stop. I got a, what's my Then I got that tip pick. Then I hold him to a field goal, though, which he was already pretty much in field goal range after that tip pick. So that's okay. I'm still in good position. Still get the ball ahead, man. We're just ending the, the first quarter here. So I, I still feel good about my game. I've trips tight end is really hard to defend, especially when somebody mixes up their plays well and knows how to take some short passes here and there. So I feel good. Two possessions and only three points. Mm. So I'm going to come out here. Once again, a little bunch action. We're gonna flip it. We're gonna you hot route a corner route, then you flip bunch. That's how you get that post route to come over the middle. Once again, we're gonna hit Julio Jones throw the ball. Try to spin right away, just so you don't get hit. That's pretty much why you spin right there. I don't want to get hit right away, and I promise the one thing about the spin that's tough as hell is that you really can't hit stick it. Whether it's spinning fast behind you, no matter who what good the spin is, you can't hit stick them when they're spinning. He will try mixing the verticals. I can quick snap. Oh, I would take it to the quarter. But verticals is a play where you motion out. You can quick snap, throw that corner route if the corner's in the deep blue zone. So anytime somebody's running cover three, cover four, or something like that, make sure you mix in that verticals motion out. But what I noticed is two deep safeties here in this. I think he's in three, four, or whatever. He's in four, three, trying to get that. He's trying to get the loop on the left side of the field. His D tackle to loop around his D end. So, I, I think he's just going to be sitting in cover two most of the game. So, I, I really don't go to any cover three beaters. It's pretty much just going to keep taking what the defense gives me. Bang, hit, hit Shea Sharp underneath. Forget me, got me a cool eight yards. Anytime you get eight yards on them little dump offs, man, that's definitely a bonus. Got to take them, man. If you continue to take those, that's what's going to make your bunch good. That's the difference between... You know, an elite level offensive player and an average offensive player. Obviously, we all know how to run Pat Sale. We all know how to run, you know, the plays curl flat and verticals. But if you're able to take your flats, that's what's going to make you a better player. 
Here we go. I'm looking for a wheel route. Hit the wheel route over here to Gurley. Bang. Get in the field goal range. So now, no matter what, the game is tied. Uh, trying to let to go ahead and use a little bit of this time here. Because I get the ball at half, I can double dip the chip, as they say. I can score before half, and I can go ahead and, and get the ball out of half to get uh, kind of two possessions back to back. So you see I'll mix that in. Hit the flat right over here to Sharp. Get that block. Get another block. Ah, oh, man. Sean Taylor grabbing from behind. But now let's see how this clock works. I, I don't really want to give him the ball back with too much time. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I want a touchdown. If I, feel if I can get a touchdown, I will feel very good about where I'm at in this game. My ability to go ahead and try to win this game pretty much. That's how I feel. So it might even be a spot where you bust a run every once in a while or you just use some clock. And right now, I swear these route cams, every once in a while, I cannot. I, that just freezes. Like, I just stop. It won't let me do any more hot routes. It won't let me snap. It won't let me max protect, all that type of things. So I have to burn a timeout. As you see, I got Ghost as my, quarter, as my coach. That's my coach is uh, Ghost Madden, the 2018 Club Series champion. Make sure you guys pick up a coach, whether it be Problem, Team More, uh, Joke, Ghost, or I, I forget. Oh, or you can get Nini too. There you go. That's that wheel route I talked about. Getting me inside the 10 yard line. Bang. So we're flirting around the two minute warning. But like I said, I do have Ghost as my coach. Inside the 10, I just put a YouTube video out on how to score inside the 10, how to make it more effective to score inside the 10. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and try to do. I try to go up 7 to 3 here. I get the ball to half. I feel very good. It is 10 passes to no runs for me right now. From do is pop a run right here and get blown up. I mean, lose, I lost four yards on my in, on my in, uh, halfback base. But what that's going to allow me to do is take it to the two-minute warning as we see uh, Coach Ghost. A lot of people have Coach Madden, man. I have Coach Ghost. You know, I'm not very good on field goals. Coach Ghost gives you a negative 10 field goal rating, but it gives you a plus 10 flipping bunch rating. So when you have Coach Ghost, you can flip bunch a little bit faster. But anyway, we're at the 10-yard line, second and goal. I have two plays because I will kick my field goal here. To tie the game, I have two plays to get in the end zone. I have Keyshawn. I have Julio Jones. I got Randy Moss. I put him on the post. Go up top. Oh, man, I need Keyshawn to squeeze that, as my man Strafing will say. He got to squeeze that. Get to a third and goal. Probably might look for the same thing, same type of high ball. No, I'm going to look for Gurley. Gurley on this wheel. Or I'm looking for the same high ball in the back of the end zone to Keyshawn Johnson. We'll see. Like I said, I have Julio Jones, Shannon Sharp, Randy Moss, Keyshawn Johnson. A bunch of people that can spec in the end zone. A bunch of people that can make plays. And I get sacked right there by Alan Page. Bang. So, bad red zone. Like I said, I didn't block anybody in that little loop thing really killed me right there. Alan Page got to me. So, I'm going to take a little bit of time off the clock. Try to kick this field goal. He gets the ball back. I got to try to hold him. Hold him to no points right here, man. It's an important drive. Uh, it's going to pretty much... Uh, it's going to it's gonna dictate how the second half is played. If I can hold him to no points, I'll have a huge advantage. If he can get a field goal, I'll be down a little bit. If he can get a touchdown, that would be huge for him. Definitely going to have to go ahead and uh, try to hold the door as far as not giving up any points right here. It's going to be tough, honestly. I mean, you have to realize as a man player, when you're playing somebody else that's halfway decent... That stopping him from going to get a field goal range right now is going to be tough, man. Because yeah, the time is really not a factor. There's all his timeouts. And uh, I want to switch it on aggressive. Let's get a little wild right here. Let's really try to um, get a sack. A sack would be huge in this situation. I'm going to go back to the dollar here. Try to get a little more block shed pressure. What I'm going to do, I think I man up the tight end right here with Cam Chancellor. So he can't run that setup he did earlier. And what do I tell you? First play, aggressive. He didn't block anybody. We get those one-on-ones with Clowney and Mac. Sack. But now I'm going to switch it off because I figure if you're playing Madden and you get sacked that bad, no matter what time you're on the clock, you're going to fake snap the next play. You know, we'll see if he does. I really don't remember if he does or not. But, you know, that's how I feel. He doesn't quick snap. Throws the little, curl, the little in route underneath. Bang. Ed Reed makes a play. This is a, a huge down right here, third and four. Um, like I said, I am off aggressive. I definitely don't want to give up a first down on, on aggressive. So it's third and four. 
man of the tight end. I don't want to get hit with that same. I I know he's going to go back to that same setup with the corner route and the what you call it. And we get some scream. He throws the flat pass. Derwin James makes the tackle short of the first down. Now I call timeout right now because it's fourth down. Put some pressure on him to get this. You know, even though it's fourth and one, it's pretty manageable. But at the same time, I don't want to not call timeout. And the time way I have an opportunity to get the ball back here. You know, regardless of how short a field goal range is, maybe it's questionable because I did lend him another timeout that he might use uh, down the stretch of this game or down the stretch of this half. But at the same time, when it gets to fourth down right now, I kind of want to get the ball back. And I was pissed off because I did put Ed Reed in a hook curl and I did shade down. Uh, just to protect for that exact play, and it did not work for me. I mean, he was able to snap and throw that fairly easily. So I had to find out a little better way to cover that particular flat route and route combination because Ed Reed and a shaded down hook curl did not do it. But um, let me say, so same thing. Like I said, I'm really preparing for that same setup with the tight end on a curl. But he comes back here, he throws the, tight, the running back on a flat, boom. So now I'm starting to regret calling timeout for him because it kind of saved him a little bit. Definitely got to hold him to three here. He's getting close to field goal range. Anything uh, deep down the field will hurt me, but I definitely have to make sure that I do not uh, give up a touchdown here. He can still pop a run. Plenty of time on the clock for him to pop a run and get in the field goal range. And he, I don't lurk the corner route. That's exactly what I've been setting up all day was the corner route to stop that corner route play. And he put a little drag underneath, and I just looked at that because I didn't because I figured five more yards using field goal range, so I was playing a little bit aggressive with my user, and gave that up. So that was a huge play. But now we got him on the 23 yard line. He has two timeouts. Runs a little play action here. Hits the catches this, and wham! That's Cam Chancellor that just put him in the dirt, and he caught the ball. I mean, shoot, I paid Cam Chancellor a lot of coin. He was probably a million coins to make Cam Chancellor. And he hit stick to Randy Moss, but he held onto the ball. So now we're on the 10-yard line. Really, we're getting that timeout, but I felt like I needed to call that timeout, man. Let me know below. Would you call that timeout? Get him to a fourth down. Get the ball to half. It was 30 seconds left. It was definitely an opportunity for me to get the ball back and maybe get a field goal. That's why I call a timeout. This set, I'm just thinking, um, I'm thinking toss. He might come out here in a toss uh, because he has a timeout. He can toss, but he just comes out in this play. Throws, throws a... Um, a what a drag route because I manned up my my flat zone over there. That was a good play. Get him to the three yard line. But now he wasted his timeout because of that. If he would have got out of bounds, I would have been really tough to play defense here. Now we're just high ball, high ball, high ball. That's all we're on. Just like the last video, my, my safety is deep in the middle of the field. And, the, and then he just mosses Patrick Peterson. I think he just snapped through a high. Jerry Rice caught it. And hey, you guys been playing man the last month or so. When they get a high ball in the end zone, I mean... The rest of the defense probably gives up. So, calling that timeout killed me. Uh, it definitely came back to bite me a little bit, but I feel like I would still call that timeout nine times out of ten pretty much every game I play, especially with only a 3-3 game. Maybe if I'm really winning the game or I'm up 10-3, to I'm up 13-3, to maybe I wouldn't call a timeout there, but I feel like uh, to get somebody on a fourth down in their own territory, in the end of the first half, it was definitely a good timeout. But after that, he went right down the field, put a lot of good plays together, and really uh, was able to get a touchdown. So that was perfect, per perfect case scenario for him because, man, now he's up seven in a situation where he was looking at being tied or he was looking at being down, but now he's up 10-3. to three. And honestly, no matter what, we probably all take that in Madden, be up seven points at halftime. No matter whether you're kicking off or whether you're receiving, it's definitely a, a big play to be uh, up seven points. Now here, like I told you guys, man, it's a lot, you guys watch a lot of videos that I do. I don't care if there's one second on the clock, ten seconds on the clock, four seconds on the clock. I, I'm I'm doing something. You know, I'm not going to kneel the ball. I'm not going to, you know, just, I mean, maybe just run. I don't have a problem with people running. But I'm definitely not going to kneel the ball. Throw that little wheel route there to Shannon Sharp, and what that does it kind of almost gets me in territory where Michael Vick. I can't. Michael Vick can hit the end zone from here. You know, so I have Randy Moss. I, like I said, I, I told you these three wide receivers, all goons already. He's going to run a little three deep. I, I don't really like anything that I got. So I'm going to just dump it off down here to Gurley and try to get busy. And they swarm and tackle me. So that's how the half ends. Down seven, but I get the ball to half, so I have to go down the field and uh, really... 
get seven, tie the game up. That's pretty much the goal right now. It's it's a it's a typical Madden game, man. I'm down seven, have the ball. There's nobody blowing anybody out. There's no huge leads. It's a tight, low scoring game. People are completing passes. The game is going fast. That's pretty much uh, what you can expect in, in a decent game of Madden. This guy was really good. I thought he was he played really decent trips tight end. Anybody that can play that, that formation very good is going to be tough. And he's been running this little glitchy loop. I don't know if it's 4-3 normal, big nickel, whatever it may be. He has, you know, three linebackers that are safeties. As we see there, Dawkins. Oh, now he comes out in nickel normal, which to me, I don't... I love when people come out in nickel normal right now because... Obviously, yeah, he blitzed everybody, and Keyshawn Johnson dropped that pass. But it's a different look from what he's been running the whole game. He's been running a lot of uh, coverage defense, rushing three. It's been hard to find that little the opening in the zones and in the man coverage and everything. When people come out here and send six, I feel I don't ever want to say I feel comfortable against somebody blitzing six at me. But it's kind of a lot easier to go ahead and uh, as I throw a freaking interception right to his face. But it is a little bit easier for me to uh, kind of find a hole in the defense. You just got to make a fast read. And obviously, right there was not the right read. He put the safety in the yellow zone. He came down and really popped that play. Looking back at it now, I had the flat route. I had the drag route. I had everything open pretty much and made a bad read right there. So don't kill me for telling you how I like playing against a blitz a little bit better than the block shed because I do a pick the first play or the second play he came out and started blitzing. Like I said, this set, I'm just playing um, I'm playing toss right here. Trying my best to play toss and play that wham at the same time. Here's the wham. And we get pancakes somehow. And But it's Damian Clowney, the best the best player in the D-line. Makes a play. That out of the way chemistry, man, that's a must for me. I don't know if you guys use it or not. I love it. And here we go. Same thing. He goes too low. Wing tight end. I'm using Cam Chancellor right in the middle of the field. I'm going to click off, click on, hit stick, fumble. Bang. Get the ball right back. Thanks to Cam Chancellor, man. Like I said, what I do is I, I get a head start going with him. Get a head start. Click off. Let the computer take that little five-yard angle, ten-yard angle to the run back. And click on in the last second and crush him with Cam Chancellor. 99 hit power. We saw him earlier get caught. Hit Moss, he didn't drop the ball, but right there he saved my life. I was about to go down two scores, and Cam Chancellor killed that guy. Definitely was a, a, a huge play for me. Here we go. Now, like I said, after throwing that pick, I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to take what the defense gives me when you blitz six at me. Boom. Got the ball back. It's always relieving as a player, man, when you're about to go down two scores, but then you get that fumble. Boom. Way to play right there. Way to uh, make a play by Cam Chancellor. That's why I pay him. So, like I said, he's blitzing six. I'm going to keep running the same setup right here. It's a great way to spread the field open. As I hit the high ball over there to Julio Jones, he gets down perfect animation before Dion can hit me. I mean, I'm not really not worried about Dion hit me, but before anybody can hit me, I'm able to get down right there. So, like I said, with this nickel normal, he's pretty much sending six every play. And when you play against nickel normal like this, you have to be prepared for send six every play. Not that he's going to do it, but you have to be prepared for it. As you see here, he sends six again. Moving the pocket a little bit. Snap, throw the drag underneath. Keyshawn Johnson, big body. I think he has like 86 truck or something like that. It's crazy. But you go ahead and I get that first down on a drag route because Keyshawn fought for me. And you don't see my wide receivers really getting blasted like that because, like I said, they're bigger bodies, man. 6'3", 6'4", 6'4". This is here. It's pretty much a cover two look when somebody's in nickel normal. I mean, they're not going to really mix up. At least this guy isn't going to mix up too many different defenses uh, as far as coverage wise. As you see here, I like this same play. This is a quick setup, especially if someone's blitzing. And right here, he only rushes five. Once again, dump it down to Shannon Sharp. Terrible animation right there. I wound up only picking up one, or I picked up three yards. It didn't look like that much. If I would get fall forward there, I would have picked up, shoot, six or seven. So. We get over here. Just want to keep trying to move the ball effectively. I'm trying to make them pay for blitzing this many people. <clears throat> I just say, well, you can mix in Pat Sale. You can mix in Curl Flat. You can mix in a lot of different plays. But I'm still going to just high low to right side. High ball over the middle to Julio Jones. Now we're in field goal range. Feeling good. We're moving the ball a lot better when we go for these quick, make the right read on these quick passes. Pretty much got the, the low flats, got the high flats, and then the middle of the field with two different options. 
Definitely want. Here we go. We're going to go for it all. Hopefully he's covered too. He gets aggressive. I can hit one of these three dudes. But it looks like he mans that one guy up and every, nobody's in a, in a cloud zone. Was boxed. Obviously nothing could. You can't make anything happen there. So I could just ran out and got rid of the ball as fast as possible. Preserve as much time. Because one thing about the time right now is I'm, I mean, I'm moving the ball fairly well this drive. But I am using some time off the clock. So it's going to maybe get close to getting to the fourth quarter. And best case scenario on this drive is I get a tie game. Giving him the ball back in the tie game with only a fourth quarter left. Could get in the instance where he starts milking me out. Here we go. Hit that post right over the top of the wheel. Jones hold wide. Come back to the ball. That gets him away from the defender so he can't get hit. Bang. Inside the 10-yard line. Feeling good. Just got to score, man. I was inside the 10 earlier. Did not score. Did not uh, complete the drive. We got to complete this drive because we're down by seven. We have to. It might even be four down territory because I don't want to give him the ball back. High ball, I do right at him. But, you know, it was out of bounds. Looks like I like this little play, the spacing switch inside the 10 because I have the curls on everybody. And I, I'll go ahead and use my route cam to put Keyshawn Johnson on a post route. Hmm. Here we go, flip a bunch. I want to run base. I feel like I can really pop this base right now. I can get out. Go try to go right up the middle. Allen Page kills me. Sean Taylor kills me. Get to a third and goal, man. This is where I was at. This is where I don't want to be. I mean, just like the first drive, I'm kind of stalling out down here. Got to look for Keyshawn Johnson right here. I have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put Keyshawn on, on a, I think I want to put him on a corner route. What I want to do here. Ah, I remember what I did. He was manning up both my receivers on the left side. Every play down the red zone, he was manning up my my running back, and he was manning up the left receiver. So that means there was no zones in the middle of the field. He was pretty much, his user was pretty much uh, covering the whole middle of the field. So what I did right there, I was like, okay, so if you're going to man up let two left people on the left receivers, I'm going to just bang a quick little slant to Shannon Sharp. You, you won't be able to react fast enough to it, and I'll be able to snap throw this in front of your user. And that's exactly what I did because I figured he would man up those two people and leave no zones over there so I can snap that snap throw that tight end slant. And that's just uh, predicting what your opponents want to do. That's something I've always been good at is being able to see what they're doing and draw up the right thing for that play. So I put just put a slant to Shannon Sharp. He, everybody was manned up on that left side of the field. Boom. So I was able to go ahead and get a touchdown there, tie the game up. Uh, back to this trip tight end. I'm back in the big nickel right now. I don't know if I'll go back to manning everybody up, but I really feel like Jerry Rice or Tyreek Hill, whoever's on this post route is getting a touchdown pretty much. As you see, there's the post, but he hits this same in route. I don't want to use it because I do see this post really getting open down the field. So I, I'm, I'm kind of questioning running this whole man coverage. But at the same time, I have to be aggressive here. I can't let him t clock the whole game out. as He should take this to the fourth quarter 1,000%. We'll see if he does. But like I said, you uh, but he does snap the ball. Bang, we get a shed there by Clowney. That time played a little bit better defense. Didn't man up everybody. Kept a deep blue so that, that post route didn't kill me. But uh, like I said, you got to kind of play a little bit aggressive. When a tie game in the fourth quarter when they had the ball, depending on where you're on the field, you got to play kind of aggressive because you have to get the ball back. You know, I, for me to win the game, honestly, like for me to win the game, I have to touch the football again. So in other words, I want the football back, whether it be me stopping him right away or me, honestly, him scoring right away and me getting the ball back, you know. So I think I just switched on aggressive. No, I checked right there if I was on aggressive, but I wasn't. So we'll see if he fake hikes. I don't even think he's fake hiked all game. You know, it's definitely, it, there goes one, but I wasn't in aggressive. And I give up this in route again. I don't know how many times I want to give up this in route. But it's starting to become frustrating. He's 13 for 16. Only has the one pick. He's played really good. And he has he has Steve Young. Which I don't really... I, I, I don't fear Steve Young the same way as I fear Vic. Bang. As we get another crazy sack right there. Khalil Mack. Really getting after the quarterback. That sack was great, man. But it's keeping his clock running. His clock is really... His friend right now, man, because although three minutes isn't a two minutes, it is a one minute, it's still getting down there, man. He's flirting with this field goal range. Here I go just putting a couple zones on the field. Here's the play action play. He go ahead and tries to fit this post route. Bang, bang, bang. We all break it up. I can't get a pick right there. I've seen way worse things picked off than that tip throw pick. 
third and 18 chat this is where we're at now third and 18 um tough place because i don't want to give up the first down if i give up the first down but at the same time i don't want him to get in field goal range so it's a tough spot as far as what if i want to play the sticks if i want to play back if i want to play aggressive i'm just gonna run this little cover three shell right here and he hits the pole he hits a little slant bang he gets in the field goal range we'll see now this is a spot where you can kick you can kind of go for it no matter what it may be and i think i actually believe he comes out here and goes for it and uh i'm gonna come out in a big nickel i looking back at this oh man so like i said every time he's had a short yardage play he's going to that little quick in route to the left or outside left receiver man up all those guys everybody is manned up right now i got hard flats because of short yardage and he hits me with this corner route bang if i put a cloud right there i might stop that play fourth and four he hits me with a dot the thing about it is he gets inside the 11 inside the 10 or you know the 10 yard line so he's not gonna be able to take this whole game no matter what i'm gonna get the ball back here so right now it's pretty much i'm not gonna play the run right here i can't give up the run i can't give up high balls i'm gonna say that i manned up everybody looking back if i would have had a cloud flat on that play i'd probably make a stop right there lawrence taylor getting off a block miles garrett is on the ground jeez but lawrence taylor getting off a block right there making a the tackle bang pretty much second and goal i'm gonna call it second and goal i know he's on the nine yard line but it's feeling like second and goal to me but the next play should take us to the two-minute warning i will definitely get the ball back with plenty of time plenty of timeouts to be able to go down the field and make a play same thing i'm probably playing the run worried about these curls high balls things like that and we get a crazy sack right there from Khalil Mack. I swear, man. Now that I'm looking at it, it's all about that dollar. This over G is just screaming. Get him to the 15 yard line, chat. And honestly, this is where it kind of I might, I might be looking to uh, just run the ball and make my opponent use a timeout, or you know, because you need to take this lead. So it's not two down territory. You only have one play from the 14 yard line to get it in the end zone. It's pretty wild chance for you to get that. So, in my opinion, I would probably just run here or a safe throw, maybe a screen call, a draw, just to make me use a timeout and still kick my field goal. Once he motions over the running back, I eliminate him running the ball, which is, I hate when people motion over the running back like that. It just eliminates the fact that he's going to run the ball. So, now I'm just playing pass. I'm pretty much just playing my zone. He throws the wheel route. Like I said, it was a safe call. It was a safe throw. Hits his running back. I call timeout to preserve time because I'm going to have to go down the field and get a field goal. And uh, so we get here to a four, to a field goal. I'm going to have a money drive. They go tie the game up. That's what it's going to have. I've moved the ball fairly well through one bad interception. So I feel good about going down the field. Like I said, this is a situation where if you're playing mad, man, you're playing somebody good, it's going to be tough to keep them out of field goal range, especially with this much time on the clock and two timeouts. <clears throat> Love the new feature in the game where a sky kick kicks the ball all the way out the back of the end zone. Just eliminates, I mean, you know, these kick returns and things like that to uh, affect the game. I'm going to have to go down the field and earn my points, really. Hmm. So, he's back in the in the over G. Or he's back, yeah, I believe this is just over G. But the, uh, trying to get this loop over here. He rushes forward this play. I step up with Vic. Get busy. Get a cool 15 yards. Bang. That's a great start to the drive. Already flirting with midfield, already flirting with field goal range, plenty of time on the clock. Let's see. Like I said, he's backing this over G. I think I need another little blocker over there on the left. It's tough to block this little glitchy loop with uh with just your D lineman as I hit the little flat pass right there. Get a decent animation, get four yards. And I mean, I'm cool with the clock running right now, man. Obviously, I'd love to get a touchdown, but I need to go tie the game up and not give him the ball back. Probably force overtime, something along that nature would be perfect. He's feeling me getting a little closer, bang. So he blitzes everybody, gets a crazy shed right there. It was bad pocket, but I mean, I got to step up a little bit more. Lawrence Taylor sacks me. That was a huge play on second and, and second and six to get a sack. Now it's third and fifteen. I gotta make it. I gotta make a play right here. Same thing. I want to cook up. I'm just a little drag. Got a little curl to my tight end. And I got to hit the drag. I don't get screamed at. Bang. Ghost calls timeout. W, we got to talk it over. Fourth and 23. It's looking dark. 
When I mean dark, like bird box dark. So here we go. Bunch, this is the best uh, long yardage play in the game. It's definitely going to be a, a big um a big play for me to go ahead and get this uh, first down. So I uh, what I'm looking for right here, obviously the deep corner route and that deep in route, one or the other. He blitzes everybody, doesn't get any shed, and then be able to hit this deep in route to Keyshawn Johnson. First down, I don't call my timeout. I got to keep that in my back pocket just in case. You know, I got to keep that for later. And uh, boom. So we're going to go ahead. First down, time is clicking. Time is, is going off the clock. Quick snap, pretty much anything right here. I hit my running back underneath, getting close to field goal range. He fights. Use my timeout. I'm at the 40-yard line. I believe my kicker is like a John Carlson or something. I don't have a crazy mutt kicker. I just have a regular old kicker, maybe 88 kick power or something. I think I'm flirting. This is a 57-yarder, 24 seconds left. I can still run the ball. I can still pop a, a base and then call it a rush the line and get a field goal. What I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm going to block this right here with this guy. I'm going to block that rush with that guy. Go ahead, look for something, look for the post or the middle. I dump it off the Moss, make a spin, make a move, catch a block. Keyshawn Johnson inside the 10, dive for the end zone, touchdown. We take the lead, man. That's what it's about. That's how you make a play. Obviously, I could have got tackled inbounds. If I did, I would have had to rush the field goal unit out. But I'm able to make that one person miss. And I catch that block from Keyshawn Johnson, man. Not that, not that Tyreek Hill wouldn't have blocked him, but that bigger body, Keyshawn Johnson, really held that guy up. Allowed me to get to the end zone. So, man, between that 4th and 23 and able to go ahead and get that uh, that first down on that big, that long yardage. And I was able to pop a, uh, pop one drag, one move, and get to the end zone. 16 seconds left. He needs a, he needs a whatchamacallit, he needs a touchdown. So, pretty much here is pretty much the most basic defense you can run, really. Almost three deep territory, but I'm just going to run cover three. Put deep halves all over the field. Maybe blitz a couple other people. You know, just for apply a little pressure. Now, I'll put that guy on a spy. This is a little pro tip. I'll put that guy on a spy, then send the spy rather than blitzing him. I feel like it gets a little bit glitchier, confuses the offensive line a little bit better. So what I'll try to do is send him. But sometimes I mess it up. But there you go. I send him, but he does. for some reason, I don't know what I was lurking on that play. Give up the corner route over there to Tyreek Hill. Now we're at midfield. So midfield, 48-yard line. Um, same thing. He's getting close to Chuck at the Moss territory. It's definitely uh, you don't want to get in Chuck at the Moss territory. That would be really tough to get to that area. But at the same time, we're uh, honestly, this is a place where you can play three deep. You can play two man under. Anything, just make sure there's more people on Moss, really. And what we're going to do here, though, we're in the little... Nickel G, we just blitz every linebacker. I got Jamal Adams. I'm not getting beat deep with 98 speed. And we get a screamer off the edge with Khalil Mack. I'm getting down to one last play here. A 43-yard line. Well, let's go ahead and, you know, uh, what do I do here? Pretty much the same thing. I mean, I blitz both. I don't need yellow zones right here. You don't need yellow zones. You don't even really need clouds. You just need deep zones. Make a couple tackles. As you can see, just blitzing both of these linebackers. Don't give them all day. Because it's kind of like real life, man. You don't want to give them all day to where wide receivers can run down the field. Here he goes. He dumps the ball off there to Gurley. Get out of bounds. Bang. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna, I think I'm going to slitch, come out here in three deep. Change my personnel, man, because I have a lot of I have a lot of Bobo players. And I don't know. I think chemistry should count no matter where they are on the field. If you put a safety at corner, his chemistry should still, still count. That way I could do my depth chart and not have to worry about all this nonsense moving people all over the place. But, like I said, this is just a three deep territory, 46-yard line. Just running three deep. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'm trying to move Sean Taylor. Quick snaps and, and <laughs> Jamal Adams just gets an A-gap because he was manned up on a running back and he got the instance to block. That end of the game. Shoot, tough game. Had to get a money drive. Had, he played really good offense. I thought he really dotted me up for the most part. Chips tight end is definitely hard to guard, definitely hard to uh, contain. And this is the fourth down. You can see he blitzed seven people at me. But that, if that corner come off the edge instead of wrapping back across the middle, you got to check your blitz angles on the fella, on the people that you blitz. But as you can see, he blitzes to the middle. What that allows me is to get that edge and run with Vic. 
This is why Vic is always the best quarterback. No matter what, how he throws, he runs away fast enough to get that space to fire off that pass to Keyshawn Johnson. Any other quarterback, Brian Dawkins probably gets to right there. But Michael Vick made that play for me, man. Huge play. That's how we got it done. I appreciate y'all watching.